Fathers love everyone and welcome. Today we're going to read John chapter 17. Probably one of my favorite chapters of all. So sit back and relax. Let's see what the Spirit has to teach us this week. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou hast gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known all that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou hast gavest me, I have kept and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou hast gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, and thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. All right, as always, 
Let's do a little review. As I said, this is one of my favorite chapters. Um, this is what a lot of people would call the high priestly prayer. It's a prayer that Jesus gives for his disciples. He knows he's about to be delivered up and crucified. So he starts out the prayer by saying, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that your Son can glorify you. Since you've given him power over all flesh so that he could give eternal life to as many as you've given him. And the eternal life is that they know the one only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. So he starts out by asking the Father to glorify him. It's interesting. We don't really comprehend what all Jesus gave up for us, but we understand the suffering he had on the cross. We understand the beatings and the mockery and all that. But I don't think we realize Jesus, since before this world, world was ever made, was with the Father in heaven. And he gave it all up for us. Separated from love. Love that we can't even imagine. That he had known for Ever. I mean, before time. <laughs> Gave it all up for us. To so ask the Father to glorify Him. You know, we're going to see glorify in this chapter. We're going to see words like sanctify. I'm going to have to do a video about what salvation truly is. Because a lot of us think it's just saying we believe and meaning it in our heart. And that's it. Well, that's step one. That's what's called justification. Here Jesus talks about sanctification and glorification. And it's very interesting. Because he asked the Father to glorify him. He's about to die. He's about to go to be glorified from the Father. But it's interesting. Keep your eye on these terms as we go through the chapter. And then he talks about eternal life and what eternal life is. And eternal life is that you know the Father and the Son whom he sent. Then he goes on to say, I've glorified you on earth. I've finished the work which you gave me to do. Of course, he's speaking future tense. He hasn't died yet or went to the cross, but he knows he's headed there soon. And he's going to finish the work which the Father sent him to do. And what was the work Father sent him to do? Not die for our sins like we're taught. He did that. I'm not saying he didn't. I'm not saying it's not important. It's what justifies us. But the work the Father gave him to do, as we learn from this chapter, is to make sure they know the Father. He says, Now, Father, glorify me with your own self, with the glory which I had with thee, before the world was. That's what I'm talking about. He gave up not only love, which is all he had ever known. He also gave up the glory he had. You don't think we realize Jesus was already sitting in glory. He says it right there. 
Glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. You don't have it anymore, obviously. He gave it up for us. And now he's asking the Father to glorify him once again. We don't even begin to understand the depth of Jesus' love for us and the Father's love for us and what all Jesus gave up for us. We don't even comprehend. Oh, I wish you could. And then he says, I've manifested your name unto those which you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me. And they've kept your word. we got to remember in the last chapter, they said, oh, now that you've spoken plainly to us, we believe you were sent from the one true God, and you are his son. So he's saying, I've told them, I've manifested your name unto them. I've taught them about you, Father. I've told them about you. And they get it. They've kept it. Now that they know that all things whichever thou hast given me are from me, are from thee. In other words, I've showed them everything I've done, everything I've spoke, all the miracles I've done, everything was from you. It says, because I've given them the words which you told me to give them. I've told them what you've wanted me to tell them. And they received it. And they've known surely that I come from you. And they believe it. They believe you sent me. I finally got it through to them, Father. They get it. They understand everything I did was from you. And they know that you sent me. So then he goes on to pray for them. He says, I pray for them. Not for the world. Jesus isn't praying for the world. Not that he don't. He's not saying we don't pray for sinners. And we don't pray for everybody else. That's not the point of this. The point of this is that he's specifically praying for his disciples. So I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for them. For the ones you gave me. Because they're yours. And everything that's mine is yours. And everything that's yours is mine. And I'm glorified in them. And he says, now I am no more in the world. Of course, he still is. But like I said, he knows what's about to come. But these are in the world. In other words, they're going to be here after I'm gone. They're still going to be in the world. So I'm coming to you, Holy Father, he says. To keep your own name, keep through your own name, everyone who you gave me. That they may be one as we are one. Oh, brothers and sisters, I love this chapter. makes me appreciate so much more what all Jesus gave up for us. And it also makes me understand everything Jesus wants for us. He wants us to be one, just like they're one. Oh, to be one with the Father, Son, and Spirit. He says, while well, I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Every one of you gave me, I kept. None of them got lost, except for the son of perdition, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. He's talking about Judas, of course. He says, I've given them your word, and the world hates them, because they're not of the world, just like I'm not of the world. I don't want you to take them out of the world, but I want you to keep them from the evil. So he's saying once again, I've given them your word. I've told them everything you've told me to tell them. I've done everything you've told me to do. 
And now because of that, the world hath hated them and is going to hate them. Because now they're not of the world either anymore. Just like I'm not of the world. Again, I think he's speaking future tense. He knows he's going to leave. They're going to be filled with the Spirit. And once they're filled with the Spirit, they're a new creation. We're no longer of the world. Not this system. We're of the Father's kingdom. We're of his system. Me saying, I don't want you to take them out of the world. I don't want them to die. But I want you to keep them from the evil. In other words, he's basically praying for the Holy Spirit that he knows is going to come into them. Because that's what keeps us from the evil. Listening to the Spirit. Following the Spirit. Doing what we are told to do. Obeying what Jesus taught us. And following after him. Yoking ourselves to him. That's what keeps us from evil. And then we come to that sanctify word. He says sanctify them through the truth. Your word is truth. He said, as you sent me into the world, even so I'm sending them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. So he's asking that they be sanctified. No one talks about sanctification, step two of salvation. They just like to leave you justified and stumbling along. No, we get sanctified. And how do we get sanctified? Through the truth of the Father's Word. Through the truth of what Jesus shared with us, because that was the Father's Word. And he says, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified. Interesting. He asks the Father to glorify him, but he says he'll sanctify himself. How are we sanctified? Once again, through the truth of the Father's word and through the Spirit guiding us. Jesus said the Spirit will come, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, to lead us into all truth in remembrance of everything he said and taught and did. That's a lifelong process. That's the rest of our walk, sanctification. We must be sanctified. That's what cleans us up. Not necessarily the outside right away, but the inside. We must be sanctified. Jesus prays for us to be sanctified. Must be important. And like I said, all this time he's praying for the disciples. But, and this is what I love. He says, I'm not just praying for my disciples alone but for everyone else that's going to believe on me through their word. That's us, brothers and sisters. True, born again, children of the Most High God, who believe on Jesus Christ through what we learn in this Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, on and on, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, you know what I mean. Their word. That's why we believe. We didn't walk with him. We didn't get to hear him like they did. But if we believe what they taught us and what the Spirit teaches us, this prayer is for us, too. 
the prayer that they all may be one. He says, just like you're in me, Father, and I'm in you. You know that Trinity thing people talk about? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three yet one. Oh, there's way more than three when this is all done. Because we can be one, just like they're one. That they also may be one in us. How much more beautiful <laughs> could it be? We actually get to become one with the Father, Son, and Spirit, just as they are. And the glory which you've given me, I've given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. Is that glorification? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what could be better. And I know glorification comes after this life. Not during. That's why Jesus says, knowing he's about to die, glorify me like I was once glorified. When you go to the Father, you get glorified. The Son and Spirit can justify, the Son can justify you. The Spirit sanctifies you. But only the Father can glorify you. Because he says here, the glory which you gave me in other words, glory comes from the Father. He says, I want to give it to them. I'm giving it to them. So that they can be one, just like we're one. Me and them, you and me. That they can be made perfect in one. And then the world will know that you sent me. And love them, just like you love me. And then he says, Father, I wish also whom you gave me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which you've given me for you love me before the foundation of the world. You understand what this means, brothers and sisters? Not only does Jesus pray that we can be glorified and become one with the Father, Son, and Spirit, but also that we can be with Him in His kingdom forever to behold His glory and to be a partaker of that love that He's had since before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, He says, the world hasn't known You, but I know You. And now they know you. And they know that you sent me. I've told them your name. Told them about your kingdom. I've told them all about you. I've showed you to them. And I declare it. That the love with which you love me. Could be in them. And I. In them. I don't know what else to say, brothers and sisters. What better promise, hope, gift could we have? How much more do you need to see how much Jesus loved you? He left perfect love, left glory, gave it all up separated himself from it to die for you. And before he died, prayed that you could have everything he had and has again now. What more perfect love? What more perfect sacrifice? 
what more perfect came. I hope this truly blesses each and every one of you. As I said, this is one of my favorite chapters, and I hope you can see why. I ask that you continue to pray for the children, your fellow brothers and sisters around the world, and yes, those lost in the darkness, so that they too can come to the light. I pray that the Father bless you, keep you, be gracious unto you, give you peace. I'll see you next time.